If you plan on leaving your house or other assets to your heirs, you better have a plan in place to save them from getting socked with a big tax bill. A large number of baby boomer, boomers own more than one home, and many of them don't realize how much of their worth is subject to estate taxes. So how do you avoid handing over a big chunk of your estate to Uncle Sam? Let's ask Stuart Welch, author of J.K. Lasser's New Rules for Estate and Tax Planning and founder of the Welsh Group, and Terry Cullen, personal finance columnist for the Wall Street Journal's online edition. Uh, Terry, let me start with you. When do you have to start estate planning? Well, essentially everybody should have an estate plan. Every adult really needs to. As of to... what age would you say? Uh, I would say as soon as you enter the workforce. Uh, what you're doing with an estate plan, uh, setting up a simple will, you're making sure that your loved ones know what your wishes are, which actually helps them should anything happen. Um, but it also prevents them from having to deal with any sticky situations with the state court in, in case uh, any of your members, can, uh, family members, can test what goes on in your will. And Stuart, it goes well beyond setting up a will, right? It does. Uh, actually, Melissa, we find that like 80% of adults actually either don't have a will or their will is out of date. So there's a lot of, the first thing is, is people, if you don't have one, you need to have one drafted. And if you do have one and haven't reviewed it in the last, you know, half a dozen years, you need to have it reviewed. But I think one of the biggest problems that we see is uh, in the trust area that people actually leave their money to their children too soon. So if they're minor children, the typical will actually leaves, uh, sets up a trust, and th those assets come out of trust uh, at the age of majority, which for most states is age 21. And we think that that's way too young Why? You know, for, for, for them to get that kind of money. So you we think they just can't handle it at that point? They can't handle it. I mean, what we find is most people make their biggest mistakes between age 20 and uh, 30 or 35, so we recommend keeping it in trust for at least that period of time. Uh, and going on to, we have another full screen with some other advice as well, if you want to pick up on this, Terry. Um, a power of attorney, another very important point. How do you choose who to give power of attorney to? It's really going to uh, depend on who you trust. Um, you're looking to either a family member or maybe a professional in your life, uh, say a lawyer or a CPA. Um, someone who you know can handle your finances well, will be able to uh, abide by your wishes and understand your wishes. Um, and, and again, many times it might not be a family member who's going to be the proper person to do that. You might mm -hmm. want to look outside the family for a power of attorney. And you also say set up advanced directive for health care. Right. These are the ways that you can make sure that if you have wishes, um, if you get into some kind of catastrophic accident or illness and you don't want to have extreme measures taken out, you can make sure that the doctors and your loved ones know what your wishes are ahead of time. What's an incentive trust? Uh, I, I'm, uh, Stuart, can you Stuart? handle that? Yeah, M uh, Melissa, that's, uh, we see a lot of people people that are particularly the wealthy are very concerned about leaving assets to their children and those assets serving as a disincentive for them mm, being productive citizens. Mm -hmm. So an incentive trust actually creates incentive for people to work. For example, we just did one for a client and a, basically the trust document says for every dollar that the child earns, the trust will match that with a dollar. So if they earn 50000 they're going to get a $50,000 distribution oh, from the really trust. Oh, really making them work for it. Big, big incentive. Does it, does it make sense, Stuart? Um, to skip generations or set up annual gifts or set aside money specifically for tuition, or is that too limiting? Well, I think, I, I think the answer is yes to all of those. Generation skipping trusts are a great idea. It's, kind of, it's a little bit complicated, but basically you're going to leave the, uh, the money in trust for a lifetime. That also has some creditor protection uh, capabilities there, but uh, a lot of people are reducing their estate through annual gifting. And by the way, that just went up from last year 11000 per person to 12000 per person. So a couple can give 24000 uh, a year to as many people as they want. Terry, besides not planning really quickly, what's the biggest mistake that people make in estate planning? I think uh, they don't talk to their family members about their wishes ahead of time. Uh, a lot of people think that money issues and their own wishes are kind of taboo. It's an uncomfortable discussion. They don't want to have it. Um, but really what happens is then when something does happen, family members might have conflict because they're misunderstanding what your wishes might have been. And it leads to a lot of unnecessary uh, hurtful feelings. All very good advice. Thanks so much for joining us. Stuart Welsh, author of J.K. Lasser's New Rules for Estate and Tax Planning, and Terry Cullen, personal finance columnist for The Wall Street Journal's online edition. And stay tuned for Power Lunch when we take a look at the opposite side.